key thing is it goes back to our nature and how we evolved as as conscious animals. The key thing is there's an animal part of our nature, which is we completely take appearances for reality. That's sort of the source of our problems and our misery, to be honest with you, in life. So the front that people present, the way they look, the way they talk to us, their words, we sort of take at face value. And although we might think or we might know from reading a book or whatever, that you can't always trust appearances is kind of a cliche. We can't control ourselves. So it makes us extremely vulnerable to charming people, to charlatans, to con artists, to politicians who say one thing, who do another, to relationships, terrible relationships where we fall in love with exactly the wrong person, to the worst kind of hires. You know, I do a lot of consulting work. I've been doing it for over 20 years now. The number one problem I deal with is I hired the worst person in the world and they're making my life hell, right? And why did you hire the wrong person? Because you judge them on their charming smiles, their appearance, their their smooth talk, their resume, which you can conceal a lot with your resume. You didn't look behind the facade and look at what's underneath the character. So this is kind of ingrained in our nature. It goes back thousands and thousands of years. It's extremely difficult to overcome, right? And I have the problem too. I deal with it all the time. And, and I have to go through a process where I, I step back and I say, I don't want to be paranoid, but this person is so nice and pleasant. Is there something else going on behind, behind the curtain that, that's there? You know, and then sometimes I tell myself, no, I have ways of judging that there that there, there's a consistency between the face and the reality, but oftentimes there is not, and I've become very good at that kind of bullshit detect detection, which I've been doing my whole life. How do you get good at that? Well. You know, some things are hard to put into words, which is why I struggle so diff much with my books. Um, because a lot of human communication, I estimated 95%, it's just a number, is nonverbal, mm. right? So we don't pay much attention to that because we're so word-oriented, right? We're so embedded in language that we think everything in terms of what people say. But unconsciously, without even realizing it, we're continually judging people on their nonverbal behavior, right? So there's their eyes, their smile are, are different from what they actually say, but we're not really... So in a kind of a, pre, a natural, intuitive way, we understand that but we don't trust those kind of judgments, right? So we, we rely more on what they say than on what the signals that we pick up from their body language. So years and years of training and being sensitive to it, it's probably something that has to go back to my childhood. If you put me on a couch and psychoanalyze <laughs> me right here, there was probably something in my childhood where I had to learn how to really read people, not by what they said, by, but everything about them. And I have a kind of a feel, an intuitive feel for the energy, the vibrations, the mood that people give off, not through what they say, but through their body, through particularly their tone of voice and all the other signals. That is a number, that is the main way of judging, you know, what's going, what's really going on. The other thing you look at are people's patterns of behavior, right? Things that have happened in the past. As I said in, in Laws of Human Nature, nobody ever does one something just once, right? If somebody fucks up and does something kind of hurts you in some way, and they say, oh, I'm sorry, I don't know what came over me. That, that's not me. Don't trust that. It'll happen <laughs> again. For sure, it will happen again a second, a third, fourth time. What do you think is going on there? Because when you were going through the list of things, being in a bad relationship was the one that really jumped out of, you know, you hear people ending in these just like horrendous cycles of being stuck in this abusive relationship and the person manages to reel them back in. What is going on on the side of the person who convinces themselves to go back into that relationship? Is there the need to be loved? Is there a wound or something that you're that they're trying to deal with? And how do you advise people that are stuck in a loop like that? Well, it's probably from some kind of primal wound, right? So there's a perverse part of human nature, which is oftentimes in early childhood, something happened to us, often something that didn't happen to us, mm -hmm. like the love we didn't get or the, feel, the, the nurturing that we didn't get. 
There's this kind of wound, this emptiness, this lack, right? And we grow up and we're not really aware of it and kind of things grow over this wound. But what also happens, which is the perverse side of human nature, is that early on, our kind of sexual excitement is sort of kind of grows up around that wound. Why? So that is so weird and yet seems so self-evidently true. Yeah. But <laughs> why? Well, I, I'd have to be like, I'd have to go into something, you know, hit my, go inside my own psychoanalytic, uh, you know, mindset here. But, um, you know, when you're, when you're very young, you're extremely vulnerable. You're extremely open to the energies of other people in ways we don't understand right now. Right. It's 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 hard to imagine something what I'm writing about right now in my new book. When you're two years old, one years old, before you even had really mastered language, you're so dependent on other people. You're so open to them that their energy gets infused. It's inter completely internalized. And also children at, at that age also have their, their sort of sexual nature is being created at that moment at a very, very early age, certain desires. You know, for us, sex is not just a physical thing, it's an emotional thing, right? We have, it's, it's psychological. So things that we didn't get are charged with all of this kind of energy that then could later on turn into sort of desires. So let's say, for instance, you had a mother um, who was very narcissistic, who really wasn't giving you the normal mother nurturing empathetic energy it was more about her and you had to pay attention to her right well that kind of creates the sort of desire this you're you're as an infant you really want that love from that mother you're trying to drag you're trying to attract it, pull it out of her as best you can and your energy your desire is is surrounding her with this kind of emotional charge sexual energy and you're going to find throughout your life you are going to be attracted to narcissistic women. It's going to be your, your Achilles heel throughout your life because you want to kind of re heal that wound. You want to be able to play back that initial trauma and sort of rewrite the way it ended up where now you're going to find this narcissistic woman and she's going to give you finally what you never had before. Right? It's a very, very common pattern, right? And so you're not even aware of this. And it's extremely difficult to break out of because your desire is for this type of person. So you might meet a woman, just doing it from a man's point of view, who isn't narcissistic, who's very empathetic and very caring. And she would be perfect for you. And you may even have a relationship with her. But the excitement, the energy, that charge isn't going to be as strong as with that other type. And you're going to fall back into the old patterns again and again and again. And the only way out of it is to go back and look at your early childhood and look at these wounds and confront them face to face and understand that you're a prisoner of this kind of, of, this kind of things that were ingrained in you at a very, very early age. And what does that process look like? Like, how do you confront something like that well? How do you even develop the awareness of the problem? Well, you have to look at what's going on in the present right now. You have to be, first of all, it depends on how old you are and how many relationships you have, but you have to see your own patterns. And if you have unhealthy patterns where you have debt fallen again and again and again for the wrong person, you have to see a, a sort of a through line there. What ties it all together? What's going on, right? So, um, you know, a common scenario that I wrote about in human nature is in this particular scenario where your mother is giving you the attention that you think you want, right? You have this feeling when you're a child three or four years old that that mother is abandoning you. That's almost your fault in that case, right? Because you don't want to believe that a parent could be wrong or flawed because it's too painful a thought. So you want to think that you are flawed and she has abandoned you for some reason. It's very painful. So what you're going to do throughout your life is you're always going to be the one cutting off a relationship before it gets too intense so that you don't ever have to go through that abandonment feeling again, right? That's your pattern, right? So after six months, the relationship is kind of, you know, growing. You'll find some excuse. She's not right for me. She's saying the wrong things. She's da-da-da-da-da. You'll break off the relationship, blaming her 
when in fact you're afraid, deeply afraid that she's going to abandon you and you can't stand that. So you've got to see these patterns and they're very painful and they're very difficult because they're touching upon things that go to the heart of who we are. You know, it's not just in your relationships. You're going to probably be doing that with your jobs as well. You're going to be quitting jobs before they, you know, before you get to the point where you have too much responsibility. They're very, very deeply ingrained in you and you have to be able to look at them. So awareness is everything. The ability to look at yourself realistically and understand you're saying see things as they are see the world as it is it begins with yourself seeing yourself as you are right and seeing that your adult self that's so confident and, and has this you know this way about the world is covering over some wounds some vulnerabilities from your deep childhood not everybody but for a lot of people that's the case mm. 